Greetings, Game Saladers. Uh, so my name's Stu, and I've been working with Game Salad for three or four months. And I wanted to do a tutorial um, that will show you sort of the power of tables uh, and how they can solve what is um, seems to clearly be a, a problem uh, with the game with with dealing with games that have lots of levels. Uh, so you know, normally if you were going to um, create a menu for your game and you want to create a menu where people can choose what level they want, you're going to go in and uh, you're going to go into your menu scene, you're going to create an actor for uh, like level select, uh, and then you're going to drag the actor in, and oh sorry, actually, um, first you're going to go into the actor's prototype, and you're going to give it an integer, uh, which is like, which level am I? So that the actor knows like which level he's controlling. And then within uh, the instance on the screen, you're gonna go and say, hey, you're level one. And uh, you might drag this one over and you say, hey, you're level two. And you know, that's fine if you've only got a handful of levels, but I mean, once you get a bunch of levels in there, like you know, 50 to 100 to 200 even, um, this is just not gonna work. Uh, especially like if you decide you kinda wanna change something at some point or you know, whatever. The point is, this is not the right way to do it. So what I've done is um, I put together a way to do this uh, using Game Salad's awesome tables feature. So I'm basically just gonna walk you through this um, step by step and uh, I'm gonna go a little fast, um, but you can always press pause. So let's go into um, tables and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create um, a table for the levels. So we're gonna call this TBL levels and I always prefix with TBL underscore just so that I know it's a table when I'm picking it from somewhere else in Game Salad where it doesn't, you know, it's munged together with a bunch of other stuff. So I'm going to go into this table. Um, we're actually not going to use the values of this table. We're just going to use the fact that it has rows. Later on, you can use this table to, to um, specify other level attributes like background color or you know, minimum score or whatever things, things that have to do with that level. But for now, we're just going to load up, uh, let's just load up 18 rows in the table and that's it. So we've got our levels table. We've got 18 levels in the game. And, uh, now let's go in and set this thing up. So first thing we need to do, uh, we already have, it's a level select, um, uh, level select button. Uh, I'm going to leave this white and we can actually, um, uh, just create the size in here because we're going to be spawning it. So we want to have the size here. So I'm going to make it 64 by 64 and uh, that's sort of ready to go. The second thing that we need is what I call um, a menu spawner. Okay. Uh, so the menu spawner is an actor that we use to hold the menu spawning logic. And then what we're going to do is we drag it onto the screen. I'm sure you've done this a million times with various types of spawners and things that control logic. Uh, so I'm going to drag that in and we're going to use that basically to build the entire uh, menu system. So I'm going to double click on here. I'm actually, sorry, I'm going to edit the prototype. We're going to, we don't have to do this on a, on a local level. We do it, on, um, it within the prototype itself. So uh, the first thing we need is to set up all of the various um, elements that we require to actually make this thing work. So I'm going to walk through it and as we run into a place where we need an element, then I'm going to add it. I think that's an easier way to understand what's going on. So the first thing we're going to do is we want to iterate over that table. So if you go down to your behaviors, uh, there is a behavior called loop over table. It's really, really good. So what this essentially does is it looks at a table. It iterates over the rows and then whatever behaviors you drag into here it is going to do those for each row so every time it finds a new row it's going to do whatever you drag in here so let's select our levels table we're going to select rows we're going to do the entire table now this is the important piece so store index in attribute this is basically saying wh where would you like us to store uh, the row number that you're on uh, and we want, we want, we would easily just store that in a local attribute here and then be able to use it. And you'll see why we're going to use it in a minute. But um, what I want to do is because we want uh, our button actor to be able to talk uh, to that attribute, we're going to make this a global attribute. So we're going to go out into our scene attributes and we're going to create a new um, integer. And we're just going to call this uh, spawn T. 
table index. And uh, if we go back, we are going to store um, whatever row they're on in that spawn table index. And the reason we want to do that is because uh, we're going to be using it in other actors. So if we stored it locally in here, it would be very hard to access it. So what do we want to do on every row? Well, every row of the table, we want to spawn a button uh, that um, uh, the, the spawn, spawn the button for that level. So we're going to spawn an actor, and we're going to spawn the level select button, which is already here. Um, one thing we want to do is um, we want to have it relative to the scene, not relative to the uh, menu spawner actor. Uh, and uh, let's just see what we've got so far. So I'm just going to go, oh, well, let's just save it. Um, OK, I'm just going to save this. Uh, now, if I go in um, and I click Preview, let's see what happens. Well, it spawned them all at 0, and they spawned them all on top of each other. So therein lies the issue. So. What we, what we want to do is we want to spawn them um, in a grid or beside each other or whatever. Uh, so uh, it's important to kind of set those things up in advance. So there's a few additional attributes we're going to want to set so that we can properly um, uh, handle this. Uh, so the first we're going to want to set is um, we're going to want to know what what the button width is. Um, I'm going to set these all as reels. So I call this button width, but in fact, it's not the width of the actual button actor. It is the width of like the imaginary slot that it's going to be put into. Uh, and in our case, you know, our actor is um, uh, 64 by 64. Um, so I'm just going to make this uh, 75. Uh, now we're also going to need. Um, uh, we're also going to need. Actually, we can we can just put this in. So I'm I'm going to show you the logic. So and I'll I'll add new steps as we get in. So now we've got the button width. Now, what that means is with every spawn, um, we are going to want to have uh, this actor move over one, basically, right? So we want uh, it to position itself in a certain way where uh, it is moving over one to the right for every row in the table. So how do we do that? Well, it's actually pretty easy. We want to take, um, we want to start it at the button width, okay? And we're going to multiply that by what number in the table this is. So the spawn table index. So that means what every time this thing spawns, um, it's going to each new it's going to save. Okay, so every time a, a new one spawns, it's going to multiply itself. It's going to multiply this number seventy five by the index to decide where on the x-axis this thing spawns. Sorry if that didn't make any sense. Um, and I'm also going to just change the um, this vertical to, uh, I don't know, let's make it 600, just so we can see what's going on. So now if I click play, you can see they spawned right across, OK? Um, <clears throat> Okay, uh, sorry. So we got that um, that game salad like uh, error sound bug that's happening. So I just had to restart uh, game salad. So what's happening? Let's let's see where we are. So at this point, what we're doing is we've iterated. We're iterating over each row of the table. We're saving the row in a global attribute called spawn table index. Then we're spawning the actor, um, the button, and telling it uh, to uh, spawn at uh, the button's width. Uh, which is the slot of the button times the table index. So the first button will just go at 75, the second will be at 150, and so on. So, and, and what we end up with is uh, this. So it's spawning them all. Now, obviously, um, that's not ideal because uh, we would like them to spawn in rows. So we're going to need a bunch more um, stuff in here to uh, to ha to handle that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out well how do we decide um, how many like how many how many columns until it breaks. So we're going to create um, another attribute um, which is an integer, and we're just going to call this um, num columns. Uh, so this is basically saying you know uh, we're going to have this is how many um, buttons are going to be on one row. Uh, so uh, let, let's just for now just call it six. Now how do you how do you compare something in game salad based on a number and say you know every six or every time uh, this thing reaches 
uh, a multiple of six. So the way we do that is with something called the modulus operator. Um, and this is pretty cool. Um, in order to use the modulus, we want to create a real attribute and call that mod one. And we set that to 0 0.1. And the next thing that we do is we want to create um, a rule. So the rule is going to be uh, in English. It's you know every time uh, we hit the sixth column of the row, do something. So in our case, um, we're going to say attribute um, every time our attribute uh, of mod one is greater than, uh, and we're going to do the game spawn table index. And then we're going to use the modulus, which is this um, the percent sign. So we're going to see we're going to compare that the spawn table index to um, the number six, or sorry, the number of columns in our this case it's six, but to this variable num columns. And what this is basically going to say is it's either going to return a number or zero every time it's it's greater than. Uh, um, every time it's greater than it means it's not zero so when it is zero that means uh, uh, that means that self mod is greater than is greater than it and it will it will show so this essentially means give me the remainder of this division so it's taking you know the the index number we're at so let's say we're working on row seven and we're modulus six um, the remainder is one which means that it's not the the right column because uh, the remainder is one. If the remainder is zero, it means it's, it's a multiple of six. And thus, if self dot mod, which is 0 0.1, is greater than zero, uh, it's going to do something. So uh, basically, what we wanted to do is we want to shift down a level. So we basically want to take this 600 starting point and we want to reduce it. Um, uh, we we want to move it down a row. So in order to do that. Um, Actually, we're going to need to know uh, how tall is a row. So I'm just going to make um, a new um, real attribute, uh, which is the uh, row height. Okay, the row height, and this is again just to store the attribute so that we can tweak it as we need it. So there's one called row height that I've added. The other thing we're going to need is the row mod or the row modification, um, and that's the total um, modification that each button is going to look at. Now, I'm going to show you how it works, but I'm just going to create a new um, a new attribute called row mod, and that's the one that we're going to be um, we're going to be offsetting this by. So we are going to want to offset uh, basically where. So 600 is going to be our starting point, um, and you could also create an attribute for that too, um, but I'm not going to do that for now. So we start at 600, and then um, we want to subtract. Um, this new local thing called row modification, okay? And so basically, it's going to always look at that and say, well, is there, you know, what's the row modification? What should, where should it go? And every sixth, we want to change that starting row to be um, one row height more. So what we're going to do in here is we're going to create um, a change attribute, and we are going to change um, what we call this row mod, okay? to be uh, the itself row mod and plus the row height that we're setting. And we've set that to 75, you can, we'll, we'll be able to change that. Uh, so let's see what happens when we um, hit play now, okay? So that's great. Um, as you can see, it's moving down one row each time. And oh, it looks like we're gonna get that error sound now all the time, so you, uh, sorry about that, it's just a weird bug. Um, but we, um, as you can see, we're going to hit and it's moving it down each row. But the problem is that uh, we need to start it back at the, at, at the left side. So how do you do that? Well, we want to add um, a modifier to this as well. So what we're doing here is we've got something called um, the game spawn index, which is the row that we're on. And we're placing each button at that. But what happens once we hit six or you know, once we hit our column, we no longer want to multiply it by the entire game spawn table index. We only want to we only want to multiply it by um, 
what's left over. So the it's actually a pretty simple um, change. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to need to create um, another variable and this new or sorry another attribute, and this is called um, uh, I guess we could call it column mod. Uh, so I'm going to go call this call mod. And this is um, the modification to which column it should be in. So for each one. And what we're going to do is uh, we want to do, um, we want to go down here and, uh, sorry, we're going to basically look at this. We're going to still take the, the normal button socket width, essentially, multiply it by the game table index but subtract the column mod, okay? And what that means is, uh, well, I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna subscribe this thing called call mod, okay? So it's basically saying the game table index uh, minus essentially all the, all the numbers that have come before it, like the six before it, okay? So, um, or the call. So we're gonna do another change attribute here for the, for the columns. And we're gonna we want to say hey what is the column modification and so we're gonna say we're gonna change call mod and we're gonna want call mod to be um, itself basically we want it to be whatever it is which it starts at zero which means as you know like the first row you obviously want that to be zero but once we get down to um, to the six, once we hit the six, the next one, we actually want that to be the column modification. Um, and we want to add the button width. Okay. So, um, sorry, not the button width, <laughs> the number of columns. So we want to actually add in um, num columns. Okay. So what that means is uh, every time we get to the end of the row, we're going to increase the column mod by the number of columns we want to have okay I know this is starting to get a little crazy but um, try to try to stick with me here so let's see what happens I'm gonna go and I'm gonna click play and there you have it perfect so what this is doing is it's saying iterate over all the rows in the table once you've hit six the next one I want you to move it down and move it to the left and then keep going from there essentially is what's happening and now the cool thing we can do here is you know we can we can tweak these so we can also go like let's make this um, like 120 we want to space them out a little bit maybe and then um, maybe uh, you know let's let's check nice and then let's say oh, you know what actually I want seven so I'm gonna go change this I'm gonna change that to seven play Ah, perfect I've got seven um, and that's nicely spaced out so I know what you're thinking now we've spawned all these basically dead actors who don't know who they are um, so the the next part is really quick and really easy if you recall um, in the menu spawner I stored the attribute in something called the game spawn table index um, instead of something local and the reason for that is um, I want to go into our level select actor and I want to um, it to know which level it is. So we've already got that which level attribute from what I was showing you before. And what I want to do now is I want to change that which level attribute um, to be the global spawn table index. Okay. So what's going to happen is every time this guy spawns, it's going to look at the current spawn table index and change its which level. Um, so, in order to show that, let's display text um, inside the actor, and let's make the text that it displays the level select which level, so the local which level attribute, and let's save, and let's hit play. There you go. So now you've automatically spawned a square or a button for every uh, row in the table, and when you go in, uh, you can now just easily go in and change your table so I'm gonna add a couple levels let's add you know, just, and now we got 28 levels Hit play and now it's showing 28 levels uh, next I'm gonna show you how to um, deal with locking and unlocking thanks